Okay, so when you're right, you're right. And when you're wrong, you're wrong. And I like to let people know when they're wrong, right? So but when somebody comes along and and tells me that I'm wrong, and uh, Fred does a real good job here telling me why I'm wrong and gives me good ideas on what I can do right. Okay, so I appreciate that, Fred. So it, in the particular regarding this Revelation 20, so um, my main point in that was to show that all these people are coming out with these videos and they're all wrong about, you know, in particular, get ready for his 1,000 year reign. Well, it's happening right now. All right, so there's probably not a better way to show that than to go over verse by verse what's written here in Revelation 20 because nowhere else in the Bible are you reading about this thousand year period. This is the only place, and there's only 15 verses in Revelation 20, and the first 10 are leading up to the return of Jesus Christ. So let's go over this. Okay, and I saw an angel come down from heaven having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. So keep in mind, this is John speaking or writing, whatever, what have you. And he's saying an angel, I, and I saw an angel come down from heaven. Why is that so significant? Well, if we go to Revelation 1, and we read here in the very first verse, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. So the angel is showing John these things that must shortly come to pass. And these, these are, this is a, an, another example here in Revelation 20 where another angel shows John. Okay, so this angel is about to show John something. This is, so this is not a continuation of, of Revelation 19. And it, if it was a continuation, it wouldn't make any sense at all. But we know it's a continuation because it's an angel coming down and he's showing John this thing. Okay. And um, he, and he laid hold of the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan and bound him a thousand years. So this is... Um, very simple. I, I don't want people to put too much into this. When we are born of the Spirit of God, the devil has no power over us. Okay? it's That's very simple. All right? Because, um, you know, uh, I can give you some, like an example would be, uh, fear not him that can kill the body but not the soul, rather fear him that can kill both body and soul in hell. All right, so the devil cannot kill your soul. And once you are born of the Spirit of God, he can't kill you at all. The second death has no power over you. All right, so verse 3, And cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more. People make a big deal out of this. They... They aren't, they're missing the word nations. Okay, but Satan obviously deceives individuals, but this is talking about something entirely different. It's talking about nations, okay? But we're going to see here that uh, when Satan is loose, that he will deceive the nations in a way that is beneficial for us all, okay? Until the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. And I saw thrones. Now pay attention. And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for a witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. So let me go over this one more time, a little bit slower. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them okay so the judgment is eternal life okay that's essentially what judgment day is all about right so the separating the good from the wicked right and um so when judgment is given and you've been 
um, judged worthy because uh, you believe in the blood of Jesus, right? You put your faith in Jesus Christ. So judgment is given to you and um, sin is not imputed to you, right? But those who do not believe, they are judged and thrown in the fire. All right, so there's a judgment taking place. Are you going this way or are you going that way, right? And so the judgment uh, that was given to them, those that sat on the thrones, are those that are saved, those that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, those who are born of the Spirit of God. And, okay, I mean, that's it's real simple. Okay, it's not... Uh, I heard somebody explain it as though there's going to be people sitting on thrones judging unsaved people, I guess. I mean, they've got a whole fairy tale going on with this idea that after Jesus returns, that there's going to be saved people judging unsaved people. I, I, I don't know. God is the judge. We're not the judge, okay? All right. And, okay, so, and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus. Okay, these are people that, as we read about in the New Testament and people afterwards, who gave their life for Jesus and for the Word of God. Okay, these are people that died. Okay, this is the type of thing that's going to happen during this thousand years, okay? And people that haven't worshipped the beast, neither his image, nor, neither received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, all right, this is, n this is all about saved people, okay? All these people are saved, okay, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. This is all of us that are born of the Spirit of God, those of us that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, we are living and reigning with Christ right now until the thousand years are finished. Okay, keep that in mind. Um, just because our body dies doesn't mean that we die, okay? And like Jesus says, we shall never die, okay? Just like uh, we shall never thirst. And whosoever liveth and believeth me shall never die. Okay, believest thou this? Okay. So... Let's go to verse 5. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. So Jesus is the first fruits of the resurrected. Okay, at the end of the thousand years when Jesus comes back, that's when we are all resurrected. All right. And so that means all everybody that dies but is saved during this time they will be redeemed when Jesus comes back they will be made alive again they will be resurrected they will be uh, transformed uh, or changed in a twinkling of an eye okay and then verse 6 blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection on such the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. So this is all of us now in this time period. You know, from way back when Jesus first began his ministry to the time he returns. Okay, and, and actually, actually it's, it's when he completed the mission to the time that he returns when it's finished. Um, this is that thousand year period because he had to go in order for the spirit to come. But anyways, I don't want to overcomplicate it, right? I want to keep this simple. 
So we are taking part in this first resurrection, and the second death has no power over us, and we are a priest of God and of Christ. And this is mentioned as plainly as can be in was the second Peter, first Peter two, but you are chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So clearly we are a royal priesthood. If we're a royal priesthood, then obviously we are priests of God and of Christ, and we reign with him. All right, make note now, neither one of these verses, verse 4, or verse 6, they don't say that Jesus reigns for a thousand years. It says, they reign with him. Right there it is, with him. And they lived and reigned with Christ. All right, it's not talking about Jesus reigning. It's talking about us reigning with him. All right, then, when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. All right, keep in mind, this is, the great day of the Lord. This is when Jesus comes, right? And when Satan is loosed, he shall go out to deceive the nations, which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog. This is all spiritually speaking, okay? To gather them together. This is all the unsaved people, the wicked, the ones that aren't going to be saved. The number of whom is as the sand of the sea, and they went up in the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about in the beloved city, and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. All right, so this goes all the way back to uh, Genesis 3. All right, and I, sh I, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman. And between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Let's talk about the heel of Jesus. Okay, so this is, and it shall bruise thy head. This is what this is talking about here. All right, so pay, just pay attention here. Fire came down from God out of heaven. Okay, so this is when, until our enemies are made our footstool. All right, so our enemies are going to be at our feet. Okay. The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. All right. And Jesus uh, quotes that from David, right? Till I make thine enemies thy Footstool, it's mentioned over and 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 over again, in case you missed it. It's there over and over and over again. This is when the enemy is destroyed, okay? It's when they're thrown, when the enemy is thrown into the fire, when they're destroyed. All right, and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. All right, I see too many people making a big deal out of the beast and the false prophet. They're trying to get too specific. It's very vague and should be understood very vaguely. that The beast that is in power now, the false prophets, all the falseness, all the wickedness of the world is going to be utterly destroyed. Okay, I think that's the important point to take out of that. You don't want to build entire doctrines, write books over those two mentions, because there's just nothing more to know. All right, it's all vain to go beyond that. It really is. Okay, and so verse eleven is the return of Jesus Christ, and I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it. Well, who is that? It's Jesus. Okay, who is God Almighty? Jesus. All right, who's talking to Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. It's Jesus. Okay, it's always been Jesus. 
he is God Almighty. So um, this verse here, we're given clues here from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. There was found no place for them that parallels what we read numerous times. And I always like to use Matthew 24 because it's real simple. You could go to Mark 13, Luke 21. Uh, they're both, they're all there. Okay. And then shall appear the sign of the sun. Okay, no, I'm sorry. Let's go to verse 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. This is just a wording. It's in a different way, but it's saying the same thing. That's why I've talked about before connecting the dots, right? And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. The books were open. Another book was open, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of the book, out of those things which were written in these books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell were delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So this is all judgment, basically giving us comfort that, hey, all the wickedness of the world is going to be destroyed. All right. And uh, we're going to be saved. Um, we're going to be transformed into, from a corruptible body into an incorruptible body. Okay, we're sown in corruption and we're reaped in incorruption. All right, so I can't go too much further, but I just want to go through that. I mean, it's really simple. People try to make too much out of this. And the idea that there's a thousand year period after Jesus comes back, it makes no sense because this is the return of Jesus Christ. And you can't make a sense out of any doctrine or any theory that says Jesus is here. There's no mention of him being on earth and all that sort of nonsense that you continuously hear, but that's what the popular teaching is, and they're getting this from other men, and they're not getting it from the Bible. So, in, in conclusion, read your Bible. Believe it.